Hi everyone, this is Space Toad and welcome to this new Germophilia video. Uh, th there's been a bit of delay between uh, the past video and this one, and the reason is that uh, I spent quite a bit of time trying to implement a fluid rendering algorithm in the game, and I have to report that I miserably failed. Uh, so there's no fluid in the game yet, so maybe I'll find a way to do that later on. But as a result, I lost a good month of work, if not two, into that. Uh, but I am finally back and uh, implementing some more of the basis of the game. In particular, what I want to showcase here is some of the bacteria mechanics, if you will, or inner engine working on. So um, here you can see at the bottom right corner, <coughs> sorry, at the bottom right corner of the screen, you have these new meters or, or gauges, if you will, that are essentially reporting what's inside the bacteria at any given time. Uh, the first one is for carbs, uh, which is the main fuel of the bacteria, if you will, uh, as well as um, building material. Uh, second one is lipids, which can also be used as fluid and uh, is, can be used as um, building material too. In particular, lipids are used to create the walls of the bacteria. Next one is ATP and ADP. Now, this one is a little bit more confusing than, than the others. I'm going to try to explain it as simply as possible. <coughs> uh, essentially, ATP is the energy of the bacteria, if you will. So um, when the bacteria pumps molecules from the outside, when bacteria transform certain molecules into other through enzymes and so on and so forth, uh, it consumes energy in the form of ATP. Uh, actually, uh, I'm consuming ATP as well as I move uh, around in the environment. Uh, now, when you consume ATP, it doesn't vanish. It transforms ATP into ADP, which is essentially the same molecule without the energy potential, if you will. And technically, it has less energy. You can still uh, get some energy from it, but we're going to simplify things here. Um, so, and, and when I consume ATP, I transform it into ADP. When I consume fuel, I transform ADP back into ATP, which then becomes available as an energy source. And this is the reason why, when you look at the little arrows uh, on those gauges, the uh, red and green arrows, uh, ATP and ADP are synchronized, right? If I, I either transform ATP to ADP, or I consume ATP, which creates back a similar amount of ADP. Okay. Um, so that's one thing. So that's the bacteria at work. Um, that's uh, the internal system and enzymes working out. Uh, you can see that the, the, the gauge of lipid is increasing as well, uh, which in this case uh, is because carbs are being transformed into lipids which are then going to be used uh, to create the walls of the bacteria. Now on the top left corner here, you can see the um, carbohydrate or, or sugars in the environment. And that's important because my bacteria is not able to metabolize any sugar. It's, it's quite a simple bacteria. The only one it knows how to metabolize is the uh, glucose, which is actually, I've got some here. Uh, it's at the top left of the screen. That blue molecule is uh, a glucose. So because there is glucose in the environment, you see that the carb gauge at the bottom right corner of the screen is increasing, and that's great. I've got um, fuel coming in and building material coming in, and that's uh, all good. Now, uh, in this environment, however, uh, there's no more glucose. The um, sugars, the carbohydrates are too complex, and I don't know what to do with them, uh, me being a very simple bacteria. So you see the gauge, the, the, the level that's decreasing. By the way, uh, that level is expressed in terms of um, logarithmic scale, uh, which um, allows conveniently to uh, represent very big numbers and very small numbers. Uh, the consequence of that is that it's a little bit more difficult to read uh, if you're not used to logarithmic scales. Uh, basically, the idea is that as you um, increase the level, each, each increase, each, iteration of level uh, 
takes a bit more than the previous one. Okay, so uh, at the very bottom, it may be just one unit. At the top level, it may be 10,000 units. Um, so anyway, that, that's why you, you may see that um, the levels may be very static when they're on the top and become very dynamic when they get towards the bottom. Um, so anyway, here you see I'm again into an environment when there's no more um, glucose available. So my internal uh, stock of carbs is decreasing. Eventually, uh, it may reach zero, uh, which means that my only source of energy is going to be lipids, which unfortunately happens to be uh, important to create the walls of the cells as well. So essentially, uh, if I don't have carbs, I will start to eat myself uh, to survive. So as you may imagine, it's going to be quite important to find a source of glucose as soon as possible. Of course, in the game, you will roam around and acquire new genes to be able to consume different kind of sugars or more efficiently and so on and so forth. This is just a very basic version. And that's what I'm going to start working on after that. Actually, the one thing I'm going to work on uh, after this video or start is the connection between this and the genetics. Um, that's it for now. Uh, this is where uh, the game stands. As you can see, it's uh, slow progress, but it's progress nonetheless. Uh, I hope to be able to show uh, some more exciting things in the future. I hope that you like the way this is uh, going. Please uh, let me know in the comments if you do like it or if there are things that you'd like to see or features that you uh, would like to see appear in the game. Uh, in the meantime, thanks a lot for having watched the video. I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.